So I just go back to the history, yeah, because this patient was operated uh, on this left ear uh, 30 years ago in elsewhere. I think it was in Paris. And uh, so I don't know exactly what was done, but now we can see that there was uh, probably a total stepatectomy. We have a nice vision of the of the other window. So this is 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock. So you see the piston is still attached to the incus, but there was a migration of the distal tip of the shaft. Uh, pretty good, going to enter to the over window and probably fixed to the anterior pole of the over window. You see the position of the shaft here, very anterior. Okay, you see that. So what we need to do is to change the prosthesis, of course. This could be the cause of a problem. Malice incus are fine, I think. Uh, strange mobility, but we'll see that later. And there's a adhesive band here. Anyway, first I need to remove the prosthesis. There's not much problem here, Ciso, to remove it because it's a Teflon prosthesis, which is different when we have a titanium prosthesis. It could be dangerous or wire. So I like to check the distal tip of the prosthesis, but not with a Teflon prosthesis, not that much. But the problem is that it's really anterior, so uh, we need to be very cautious about the saccule and the utricule. Okay. All right, I will remove it now. There we go. Okay, so now it's bleeding, of course, because we have a lot of fibrous tissue. Donnez-moi le lancéolé direct, s'il vous plaît. Very thick tissue, which was probably used for interposition, I think. Or I don't want to remove that completely. I will leave it. I don't need to remove it. Now we have a nice exposure of the uh, perlymphatic membrane, which I need to fenestrate, of course. So it's a bit like performing a stapedotomy on, on the foot plane. So when it's bleeding like this, I, of course, I'm going to use some uh, adrenaline, maybe a little bit. Uh, can lay. Pardon. So I want to check again the mobility of malleus incus. No, it's fine. Okay. It's very thick. Bon, on va prendre de, de la drée là, parce que... Donnez-moi le mesureur en attendant. So I will now measure the distance from uh, malice to foot plate, which is now the perlymphatic membrane. But there is a kind of lateralization of this membrane, so I need to take care of this. Currently, this is the lower one, which means 3.5 millimeter, because you know we have three uh, three uh, notches, 3.5, 4, 4.5. But I think it's probably too short. Attention, est à combien là? Bon, ça va, c'est bon, c'est bon, ça va. Bon, c'est local de toute façon là. Allez-y. Let's wait a little bit until the bleed decreases a little bit. Plafond, s'il vous plaît. So what I will do, I will perform the fenestra and I will measure again. I'm pretty sure it will be longer than 3.5. So we need to wait a little bit. Maintenant, je vais voir si ça a marché. Okay, that's fine. Tête en déclip, s'il vous plaît. Un peu, hein? Allez-y. Stop. Okay, so let's go now with the uh, macro drill. So I'm going to use uh, 0.7 millimeter diameter diamond dust burr 
and with my left hand I'm going to use a 0.7 millimeter diameter sucker to control the fluid leakage. I, I do use a 0 0.6 piston. You use no, I'm going to use 0 0.4 oh, oh, because because the of the vein graft. Right, you right. see, that's the difference. Okay. But if you don't use a vein, yes, you use 0 0.6. So this is the 0.7 and I'm going to perform the fenestra with the macro drill, diamond dust. You see I'm going to start drilling before touching the, uh, the target. I need to start the Marche pas là. C'est bon, ouais, ça va. So just before touching the foot plate or the perineum fanning membrane, I start the drilling out procedure, just leaving the, the work by itself. No pressure. It's quite thick, you see that. And now it's fine. We have now the fenestra, which I'm going to enlarge a little bit. So I did the fenestra posteriorly or mid part of the foot plate. Okay, let's see now if I can measure. You see the position of the sucker, not, not at the level of the stapetotomy. Eh? Close, very close, but 0 0.7 is safe. Now if I measure again, and now it's more 4, okay? Okay, fine. And do s'il vous plaît. This was a short process, it was... Uh, no, it's the same length, same length, four. So it's fine, but migrated. So the length was good, but the position, I think, of the fenestra was... In fact, in fact it's due to the total stepidectomy, which is not used anymore now, most of the time. Okay, so now I'm going to uh, use the vein to cover it. Usually now uh, 0.9 millimeter uh, diameter sucker. I'm going to use the needle to uh, introduce the vein and to stretch the vein. So the, the vein will be introduced with the sucker and I will stretch it. Well, see, of course it didn't work well because if it, it's, it was a little bit too fast, so in my, I mean the, the, the vein was not pre-shaped perfectly. Usually it's much better than this when you wait a little bit more. Okay, when I stick it, you can see what I'm doing. I stick it to the, to the, to the uh, suction tube. And again, I'm going to use it like an instrument. I'm going to introduce the vein and stretch it with the needle. So you need both hands with this technique. So holding it with the sucker and stretching it with the needle like this. And I take my time eh, to be sure that I'm uh, covering widely the uh, over window area, over the vein, over the uh, fascia nerve, in this case, and especially over the anterior pole of the foot plate, of the previous foot plate, I would say. Okay, now we have a nice position. And thanks to the translucence of the vein, we can see, we can see the position of the, of the fenestra. All right, so now I need to cut the prosthesis at four millimeter, which was the one I measured. So this is the uh, cost piston, which is 0.4 millimeter, as we said, with uh, the loop like this, which is a large loop. And I use a cutting block like this. So I put it on the four millimeter hole and I just cut it without adding or uh, removing anything, same. And now we need to break the memory of the loop. So I'm going to hold the shaft like this and open the loop to break the memory, okay? You need that, otherwise you cannot place it easily around the, the increase. Okay, fine. All right, I'm going to again use the sucker to introduce the prosthesis, the shaft first and then the loop. And now I'm going to close the loop. So you can use curved forceps, but I, I, as you know, I like to use the trick of the two hooks. For me, it's more accurate than the curved forceps. So I prefer to do it. So one is used to hold 
the posterior part of the uh, of the loop and the one the other one is used to crimp to close the loop ah, this one I, I don't see it so I need to attendez donnez moi le plat rond s'il vous plaît j'ai pas accès à I need to see the anterior part of the loop. Ok, allez, donnez-moi. <coughs> so this one to hold. And this one to crimp it. Ok, like this. Ok, now it's fine. Okay, that's all I need. We don't need to close it completely. Yeah, that's enough. Because there's a memory, so it will help. But now it looks good. And looking, of course, for the bending side. Okay, the bending like this is fine. So it means that it's located inside the fenestra. And the mobility from the malice looks good. Okay, fine. All right, so we're going to place it back. The, the tympano metal flap. And now placing the mirror cell as usual. Allez-y. Okay, I think it was fine. Interesting. Okay. So I wanted to know um, how, how you do, do the measurement. If, uh, are you using a notch which is at the same level of the incus? I show you. I, show, I, 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 I usually use the mid surface of the incus. The mid, the mid surface. The the if the incus is there, I'm not, right. the, uh, I'm not using the up and I'm not using the, the uh, below the the I'm using right. the mid